ladies, colleagues, friends, how are you all doing? Are you dialogued out? Are you uh, still full of energy, ready to go for some more? Um, we, uh, yeah, I, what, still energy in the room. Yes, that's what we need. That's what we need, because it is, as we know, we've heard it is about how we walk the talk. And uh, certainly that's where we need to go from here. But what we've heard a lot about here and a lot about how we accelerate uh, this energy, global energy transition. It was one of the reoccurring themes, I think, this year on this stage and in many of the different conversations that I uh, had the pleasure of being part of at this Berlin Energy Transition Dialogue. And I think what are the concrete steps to make it happen now or what can we accelerate, intensify, uh, bring together? Because there's so much at stake and we, we all know that. That's one of the reasons why we're here. I think the other thing that I noted is um, it was different this year than last year. I felt the tailwinds of Dubai. I felt the sense that the world has made a decision to move in this direction. And that gives us all who are here a bit of an extra step because we know we're number one on the right side of history. But number two, there's been a decision made at the highest levels of governments around the world. Uh, and as Minister Baerbach said at the opening, we're at a critical juncture and we have to take forward-looking decisions so that the COP28 outcome will materialize in the real economy and in the lives of people. And Minister Habeck, in his opening speech, well, he pointed out that, that there is a story of the energy transition and energy access, which is actually quite unknown in many countries. We all know it, but many people don't. And therefore, the best way to do this to be really shining that spotlight um, on concrete examples, concrete stories from real people, mayors, moms, dads, CEOs, uh, teachers, company CEOs, where that transition or the creation of energy access has already brought jobs, it's brought economic health and social benefits. And, and so that we bring people together and don't allow them to be driven apart. And we heard um, Minister Awedo during the opening speech about how um, um, Namibian build, is building one of the world's largest hydrogen project, pr production facilities and how that's going to bring real local value creation and how we need to do that differently too now. These partnerships on eye level bringing local value creation, not just extracting resources for others, but real partnership on the ground, real benefits on the ground uh, moving forward. We heard about uh, the over 90% share of renewables in Uruguay and how they, I heard about how they financed it, totally inspiring and, and uh, impressive. The impressive increase from 75 to 180 gigawatt renewables in India for the past 10 years, aiming for that 500 gigawatt by 2030, and how that's changing the lives of people on the ground. And we heard being here in Germany about how wind power has overtaken coal as the most important source for electricity, the share of renewable energies reaching an all-time high of 56% last year, the creation of 380,000 new jobs, better energy security, declining energy prices. But we know all together in this room we're not moving fast enough and we're not in enough countries moving at, uh, uh, adequately enough in an inclusive manner. This is indeed, as Minister Habeck said, a task of historic proportions, and he called it the task of our political generation, and I couldn't agree with him more. Energy security and access to clean energy, well, ultimately, it's about economic freedom and human dignity, as Nyadarka Majodi said at the opening panel as well. We know that 600 million people in Africa are without access to electricity, four out of 10 Africans. And so here is where we know that the transition means transitioning from no energy to clean energy. Tremendous untapped potential there. Uh, but in order to tap into it, well, we need to increase investments five-fold in Africa by 2030. So renewables, well, worldwide enabler for access, for economic development, for social empowerment, for new trade opportunities. And I think that's why in many countries we see that renewables, well, it's not, uh, and this clean tech, it's not just something that is about the climate crisis. It's actually about creating a good life for people uh, and for uh, around the world. And uh, they're based on uh, very pragmatic um, policy decisions that are there. 
The other thing I heard a lot of was that we cannot walk the walk alone. And therefore, untapping potential in developing and low-income countries requires really our joint effort. This is a joint collective effort that we are underway together along the entire supply chain of the energy transition from power generation to transition, transmission to distribution, possibly to export. We need radical collaboration. And that was why this BUTD, I think, was so crucial to break down those silos um, out of our way of thinking and to truly work together to join forces across business, uh, politics, think tanks, NGOs, financial institutions, because we know we need those many ingredients um, to get us moving forward along with that mindset shift on how renewables can deliver for homes, for factories, and for cities. So we need to move beyond uh, that piecemeal approach to get those, um, uh, beyond those uh, bottlenecks and those barriers. Um, colleagues and friends, before closing, I just wanted to ask the, the people who made this happen um, from the Economics and Climate Action Ministry, from the Foreign Ministry, from all of our partners, if you would just raise your hand or stand up, because I think you deserve a big round of applause. If I may just do something unconventional and just... Everybody. Thank you. You are all amazing, amazing for all the hours you gave and all the people. I hope you can feel the energy that you gave to others uh, and what you made happen here. So, Two requests from me before we close. The first is um, if I would request that when you leave, you connect differently with maybe somebody that you hadn't connected with before after having been here in an outcome-oriented way. Um, so if you're a policymaker, then pick up the phone and call your local banker. If you're, a, if you're an NGO, then maybe talk to the private sector person that you're trying to make something happen on the ground. So do that a bit differently. And the second thing is to really think now, what am I going to do differently now having been here? I know we all go to so many conferences. This one, I have the sense the energy in this, this BETD is phenomenal. What's the one thing you're going to do differently when you leave here? Um, and to bring back home, share with your, your colleagues and your friends. And um, so that when next year comes, and now is the magic switching of the sign, um, uh, we know we come back together and we learn um, because we also have to accelerate our learning here. So I want to, um, at this moment, officially close uh, this uh, BETD. And I can't believe we're moving to 2025 and shift over to BTD 2025. If I ask Stefan to come up onto the stage.